So when you're looking to specify in an HMI to an application, let's say whatever application you have, one of the most important things to do, and I would say the first thing that any user should do, is just make sure that the HMI can actually perform the functions that you're looking to have the HMI perform. Before we get into the size, before we get into the, the cost of it, the availability, it's just important to know what you're about to dig into with these HMIs rather than just saying, this is an HMI and this solution works from XYZ Corporation or this one is something that I'm just looking to outright replace because there are some drawbacks, there are some other specifications that other HMIs would have that this HMI probably supports, probably doesn't support. But it's just very important to, to make sure that at everything that, that you're looking to do is available with the HMIs we have to offer. So the first thing that I would recommend is downloading the software. The Green Series HMIs are controlled by the DTool software. It's free to download on our website, anaheimautomation.com slash download slash software. And DTools right here will have whichever HMI you're looking to use over here in the graph element window in the beginning. These ones would be separated out by size, fairly simple. Uh, I would say, you know, here's GL070E. That's a seven inch screen, has 800 by 40 resolution, and it has ethernet. Uh, whereas this GL070 does not have ethernet. So if you're looking to communicate via ethernet, know that you can't use any of these that don't end with the E as the suffix. Uh, but one of the most important things is, uh, I'm gonna go straight to the communications tab under the help and communications menu. So right here, this, this help tab is gonna be very useful. It's a five, 600 page document that's gonna go over everything from the communication pin definition, how to download by whichever uh, communication you're using, a serial port, using an ethernet, using USB, optional printer cables. If we take a look here, you'll see that every HMI is gonna come with a COM0, COM2. It's actually the same D sub pin. So whether you uh, program the HMI to have a 232 on COM0, 485, 422, they'll have different pin definitions for you transmit and receive data. Some HMIs will have an extra COM1 here that will have other pins that, that would be useful, but you'll see here COM2 has nothing on pins one through four, has the ground on five, and has seven and eight for the receive and transmit. And if you notice on COM0 up here, seven and eight in any instance is not used because it's used by the COM2. So they actually do share that same exact port. So zero and two are the same port here. But after we go through and know what our pin definitions are, what cable you might need to make, we can just take a look through manufacturers of PLCs. Now, whether that PLC is actually a logic controller, or if it's a barcode reader, or if it's a temperature module, they're all gonna be listed as PLCs because it's what the HMI is communicating to. But you can take a look here. We have Allen Bradley, BACnet, Beckoff controllers, can open slaves if you're using Simon or, or Dan Foss inverters, Hitachi. We also have our Kinko Corporation, our inverters, servo series, uh, master slave protocol connections. But let's say you were just going through and, and you had some, here's the Mitsubishi Electric Corporation, right? So if we have a Mitsubishi PLC, what you'll do here is just find which CPU you're using. These are all the serial communicated PLCs. If there's a two here, a star and a two, that means that it doesn't allow for multiple stations. But a one here will say it does allow for multiple stations. Something like a RS-422, RS-485 for multi-drop. So anytime you see right here, it's only gonna be connected to an one HMI to one PLC, you can't multi-drop on it. But if we scroll down, we look through here, we see which driver you'd need to use in the software. Here's going to be the network communicated ones. These ones would be Ethernet connected. So of course I'll say Ethernet port on the CPU unit is where you want to connect. And this is the driver of the PLC that you want to use in the software. So all these different CPU types under their general based nomenclature and which actual type you have will tell you which driver you need to use and what port or cable you would need to use to communicate to everything. So let's say we used something simple like a like an FX uh, CPU for this Ethernet slave right here. So if we come down, look at the serial communications, which port settings we're going to use, and we chose just a just an FX setting here. This is going to show you how on the actual software you would set the HMI. 
This HMI would then, uh, whichever HMI you use, notice there's no name here, it needs to have this network port, COM0, COM2, either one, uh, field bus, perhaps your HMI has a field bus, but it's important that it has a network port, so you have to use that Ethernet port HMI. And you have to use this Mitsubishi FX series Ethernet TCP slave PLC that will be in the software when you find it under PLCs. And you have to set the communications this way. You go into the HMI, under the HMI attribute, and you set the network device settings for an HMI and a PLC. Use this port number, use these IP addresses if those ones are available, or you can set your own. But as long as you know what this IP address is, it will then show you how to set it in the PLC software. Under Mitsubishi's PLC software, you're going to go to the project under the PLC parameters, set the IP address, and make sure you have the input set as decimal under this built-in Ethernet port tab. As you scroll through, you go into open settings, make sure you're using the MC protocol, not the Melsoft connection, and make sure the host station port number is 1025 as listed in the HMI software. So as we scroll through, we can see that it'll show you different settings and different communication settings that you would need for the HMI software and for the PLC software. But what's also important is as you move on through these pages, you're going to get to where we have data addressing and the address map. So if we have this FX series Ethernet, FX series Ethernet, we have all the different devices or the actual addresses that you would be using in that PLC and how they're mapped into the HMI software. So as you notice here is that you have state, state relays or state coils. Those are 4096 long and they show you the format of it. You have the zero state. If you're using like an STL, you'll have these different contacts. It won't map pointers. You'll notice that there's no pointers mapped here, but there are counters and counter contacts, internal relays, input relays, output relays. And Mitsubishi does say input relays are mapped with modifier of X or mapped with a modifier of Y for an output relay. There are counter values, there's timer values. Uh, I know that the FX series Ethernet has uh, counters that go up to 2055, but those are double words. These ones will only support a single word counter. So you can see that all these ones are mapped this way. So you know, okay, well, if I need to be able to know if my state is on or off, you can apply a button and that PLC is going to map that button state from the PLC as a displayed contact on the HMI. So let's just see if we can't put together a simple project that would indicate what state zero, state one, and, and what those different uh, like internal or output relays would, would look like. So let's say we used, uh, let's have a new project and we'll call this an FX series HMI to PLC project. We're going to take a look at HMI sizes right here is where you can say, okay, I want a 4.3 inch screen. I want a seven inch, a 10.1. We're going to go with seven and we're going to make sure that we select one that has an ethernet. So we'll take the GL 070 E and here's the resolution, all the hardware information here. We're good. So then we're going to go to our network port settings. Let's set these the same way. So we had 35 and 38. Let's go ahead and go to Mitsubishi FX series Ethernet TCP slave add and we set that as 38 port number 1025 station number one so hit OK hit finish so these are set up the same way that we saw in that in that guide in the manual and if I don't have a FX series PLC here this is just an example so we can set these all up before I've ever bought an HMI before I've ever bought my PLC I just want to see how these things would connect. So if I go into my frames of my project, drag this down, and I'm going to control scroll so I can zoom in a bit. I'm going to go to my bit state lamp. In my bit state lamps, I'm going to make sure that I have something that's just on off when it's on state zero, state one. Uh, I don't need a tag. I'm just going to use a simple graphic like this. So it's open or it's closed. But when I go into my basic attributes, I'm going to go to my address types and LB is a local bit to the HMI. Right? There's recipe bits, recipe indexes, local word bits, flash recipe bits, extended, and here's my states. Everything uh, from this extended local word down, these are all going to be contacts and states that are actually in the PLC that's connected to the HMI. So if I double click on this S, and I have S0. I can have S0, I can have S10, I can have S1099, right? And I can go ahead and hit enter here. 
and this bit that I can this uh this lamp here I can make it whichever size I want I can have orientation to it to the top right I can go ahead and drop this down to whatever size I can duplicate it by hitting control and pressing it again and I can change this address to s0 I can make another one and call it s1 I can have these three that if I group together if I group these together, I can make them all the same size, align the same spot, align them vertically and horizontally. And now what I can do is, is even if I wanted to, if I forget, hey, this one's 1099. 1099, copy, make sure that everything is centered correctly. Move those to states, right? This one's zero, as zero. So I'll do the same thing. I'll just tag it, make sure that everything is, is all appropriate. And this one's one. Copy here, make this a center, copy attributes to the state. As soon as I go through here, I'm just going to compile this one, make sure everything's, there's no warnings, no errors. I can just see everything here. I have an offline simulation, and if I'm doing an offline simulation, this screen will show up. And if I was connected to the PLC, I would need to use something like a direct online simulation. But this is what the screen would look like when I was looking at these states. And if I wanted to know what it would look like when the states were active, these ones would be what it would look like as, as the states were active. So it would go from open to closed, open to closed on, on those three. If I wanted to change the lamp and, and do what I, whatever was necessary to, to show off whichever state or relay or timer contact that I was looking at, I can, I can add those in. Now say I was looking at word addresses, right? So we have, we had all of these show up all these, the S, the D bit, S, M, C bits, but let's say I want to look at words. So say I want to look at this, this data register and this D word, right? Rather than the data contact, that's a D bit. So I'm going to look at D word and know what the format is here. Well, what I'll do is I'll drag in a number component and in this number component, I'm going to go to my numerical data. I'm going to say it's an unsigned integer and I have five integers there and the max is going to be 65, 536. 65, 535, because it goes from zero to 65, 536. When I'm in here, I can go into my graphics, add graphics to it, put a bar around it, have, have my numerical data. And from right here, again, I'm in local words. So this is local to the HMI. It's not connected to the PLC. But as I extend down, here's my, here's my words. I want to go to my data word. This is a counter word, a timer word, special register, these are a counter double word here, but if I go to my D word, right? And I look at D word 500, like I was saying, this now is going to be addressing and targeting that, that data register word. And it's anything from zero to 65, 536, whatever I have as my data in there. Now let's say your data in there isn't necessarily, um, um an unsigned integer. Say you have a signed integer in there say that you have a hex value in there. If you put in a hex value, then this isn't going to show numbers. I'm going to use four because we can't use more than four. It's going to show our hex values. So if I'm looking in there, say, oh, I want to make sure that I have zero six zero one in there. Perfect. I can, I can show that off as, as my hex values. If I wanted to show that it was going to be some other value, like signed integer, I'm going to have to reduce this value to nine, 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 ninety nine because that's the maximum you can have with a signed integer is that last bit is going to be positive or negative, but this would show here. And if I want to make sure the font was a little bit larger, I can change the font up, make it 18, orient it to the center, hit okay. And this is still a little bit off center. So what I'll do is go here, align horizontally, align vertically, and it's all set. I want to make sure this is aligned the same way as these, these bits. And we would have that sort of communication set up. Now I know that I would still have to go into the, the actual PLC into the software, of the PLC and make sure that these would connect, but using this communication connection guide, I know where my data addresses will exist for whichever device I'm using. And I can always double check that by actually going to the programming manual. If I go to the programming manual and I keep scrolling through and I look for the programming instructions. What I want to look at is data registers inputs. So if I go to inputs right here, it says that the device mnemonic is X. If 
I scroll down, outputs, device monic is Y. And what we said on the communication guide, inputs, X, outputs, Y. There are going to be parts in that programming manual that are unique to the PLC that the HMI can't actually target or address. Like we said, pointers. Pointers couldn't be targeted. There's there's other relays that, that aren't available that can't be targeted. The, these state relays can be targeted. These, uh, these other STL steps, they can be targeted because those are still state relays. But when we go into pointers, like this right here, program flow control for a pointer, we can't target those because they're not actually in the connecting guide. Now, if you need something that can actually connect and, and target those pointers, you might actually have to look directly at Mitsubishi's HMIs because our HMIs wouldn't be able to support that. But if, you, if your project doesn't actually need to support pointers, then you look through this table of, of addresses and in the address mapping that is available to the HMI and say, this is enough for my project to move forward. Then go ahead and start looking at what size HMI you need, which HMIs you can, you can rule out because they don't have ethernet. This one needs ethernet. Uh, do you do we have it in stock? Is it the, is it a correct price? Is it an appropriate setup for you? And we can go on from there. And once you have the HMI uh, software, once you have the connecting guide, and you've pinpointed what size you wanted, send in a requisition. We can walk through how to get everything else set up, and we can help you place your order.